Today I'm going to go a little outside of my usual roadkill show and tell video style to do a craft tutorial on how to make these cute double sided necklace displays that I've recently added to my shop. You can see that they have my company name printed on them which is surprisingly easy to do. I made them double sided so that I can flip them over depending on what the venue vibe is. The other side is a very eclectic paint splatter. It looks like a work surface from an artist table and a lot of the craft fairs that I do is pretty they don't really have a theme or anything like that so I can just do whatever but some of them seem like they have like a higher quality retail shop vibe to them so I want to make sure that I can do either style no problem so it's not really a secret that I love all things vintage and the look of age boards Rustic is pretty much the theme for my craft booth displays, as you can see from these photos. I like to recycle old barn boards and pallets for some of my displays and other projects. The framing for all of my other displays that you see in these photos are actually made using recycled pallet wood ripped to size on the table saw and then painted and roughed up with sandpaper. I find that the rustic look it fits my booth really well, not only for the aesthetic, but because any bumps or dings to my display cases in transit or setup, it's just not going to be noticeable because they're already scratched up and look rough and look like they've been beaten. So if they get dropped and they get a little scratch in the paint, it doesn't matter. It's just going to add to the patina on that piece. So since I don't have any aged boards the right size on hand to make these display pieces, I'm going to age my own. It is super, super easy to do this. In search for the right lumber, I went to a building supply store and I took a look around. They had some pre-aged lumber, which was pretty exciting until I actually really looked at it. Um, the price was absurdly high for the quality. It was pretty cruddy. <laughs> so I've looked around a little further into the store and I found these pine ends for two dollars each. Now as you can see here they made a mistake. Um, they started off writing it in the inch dimension and then ended up in feet. The dimensions on these pieces of wood are one inch thick by 12 inches wide by 24 inches long which is two feet. So let's get started. This is going to be a fairly messy process. So whatever surface you have your board leaned on, you want to make sure that you have some newspapers or something down to catch the drips because it will drip. So what I have here is I have my tea mixture. And this is left over from the last project I did. It's about two days old now. It's a nice caramel color, so just in case there's any sediment, I just want to stir that up. And then just paint your board with it. You're not going to see a lot of a difference right away, but you are going to get something out of this. I find that when wood ages, it takes on a slightly gold color in places, so I just put my tea water right over it. And you want to saturate every bit of this wood with this tea. For anybody out there who's a little more um, conscious on what size brush they're using, it really doesn't matter. You want a nice wide one, but this is a three-quarter brush. It's what's called a wash brush for doing washes. I use it for everything actually. So you want to let this sink in and really soak up the tea. So I'm going to go to the other side now. Just going to turn this board around. I'm also doing this above my wood box, so any drips or anything like that, it really doesn't matter. So we are going to get messy. And soaking in tea also helps bring out the wood grain. Because that's what we're doing here. We are staining this wood we are not painting over it.
And even though we're more interested in the front panels of the wood, don't forget to do your edges because your edges are going to be seen on your displays unless you're completely framing them in, in which case you can just go ahead and skip this step. Sounds like the gerbils are getting interested in what I'm doing. So now this side here has soaked for a couple minutes while we did the other side, so we're going to go ahead and go to the next step. You're going to take your tea mixture and just squeeze a big glob of white paint into it. Now it's not going to completely mix, but that's what you want. You want it to be kind of chunky and cloudy. You just go like this over top of it. Just randomly. And you can go in and fill afterwards. This is to give it that white washed out look. Where wood gets kind of white and grey as it ages. Still, you can see all of the wood grain underneath here, and that is what we want, right? Alright, so while this is wet, I'm just going to put a bit more white up here. While this is wet, what we're going to do is, I'm not even sure where you would get this paint anymore. It's an extremely old bottle that my fiancé had in his collection. It's a Delta Ceram coat. It's an acrylic paint. It's candy bar brown. But you can use any brown or even a maroonish brown for this. It doesn't matter. Because we're not going to be using a lot. I'm just going to dip the paintbrush in the end there. And what you do with this, it's going to look horrible at first. So you'll have to bear with me. Just go around the knots loosely. You want to follow the grain. just want to follow the grain of the wood because as the wood ages some boards will take on a little bit of this rotten pink color and that's what we're doing here we are going for the rotten pink and you may or may not even see some of this in your final product all right so that's there take your brush into your tea and paint mixture and go over it again following with the grains. And if you hear any machinery in the background, my fiancé is just down in the basement, in his shop, working away. He's making a bunch of um, fishing boats right now. want that to sink in there. I'm not even sure if the color is showing up through on the camera. I'm put a lot more of it on this knot here because the knots tend to form a richer color. Again, go over it with your wash. So we're going to let this sink in a little bit and do the other side, just like we did for the other end. So you can see that really gold color right there. That's pretty nice. If you want to just leave it like this with the tea stain, you can do that, because that's beautiful. Tilt it a bit. Take some of that brown color.
actually has some really nice natural orange in there that might actually hold through in the finished piece. We'll find out. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It can actually be rather random. Get a bit more paint in there. Good. also hear the dogs and cats snoring in the background because they're all taking a lovely little afternoon nap. We had 30 centimeters of snow last night so they're very tired out after running around in it. The dogs, not the cats. They always stay in. Okay. Again we'll get our wash. I may have done the reverse process this time by putting the red on before the white, but you know, it really does not matter. You're going to get a similar effect, if not the exact same. Just really hope that some of his music doesn't come into the background. Not that what he's listening to is bad, it's just I don't put music in my videos. Copyright stuff, right? Alright, so that's looking pretty cool. I think I want some more red into this side over here. I'd say that this side is done for this part of the process. And we want to keep this nice and wet. <coughs> and don't forget to do the edges. We are going to flip this again. Put our lid back on the brown because we're not going to need this one again. All right. So it looks like it's really going well. I'm just going to smooth some of this over. I haven't touched the end of the gerbil cage. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some black. There's a human coming in, so we're going to pause for a minute. So we're just going to take the black, and we're going to look at this piece and figure logically if this was an age board, where would the black be? There's going to be some in the knot, as well as the reds. These often get a little bit of rot in that center area there of the knots. They go up a bit, and where it's turning bit gray, we'll just feather that out. This is why you want to keep the piece wet as you're doing it, because it will blend very well. Alright, take a little more. I think there's be some this way. And follow the grain, always follow the grain, because you are staining it, you're not painting over it, you are making the color change in the grain. If you need it to be a little wetter, you just take some of your tea mixture and just wet over it. And 
wash over the entire thing again with the white. Making sure to go to all the edges. Alright, I'm going to put a bit more black in here. Along the edges. You take a piece of paper towel, which you've put a bit of tea mixture on from it dripping, and just wipe gently down. Anywhere that you want to touch up, and I want to touch up in here, just take a bit of black. And then you can just kind of pull off with the paper towel just to make it a bit darker in there. And I want to feather this out. Some more dark in here too. And then which way the grains are going because you're going to want to work with the grain when you're putting your color in. If you find that you have a spot that looks too painted in, just take the water and scrub into it and wipe off. So you just go ahead and do the exact same thing for the other side. Paint her all up and I'll come back and show you the result. And you may find that there's some spots that it's just not taking the paint as quickly as the other sides, but that's okay. Just put a little bit of thicker paint on there and then just rub it off and it will stain better as you can see there. It's really up to you how much you want it stained and the effect that you want for your display piece. But don't be scared to really rub into it a little harder than you think you would need. And I think I'm going to call this side done. Alright, so we'll come back when this is dry for the next step. 
So here is our second side finished. You can see that the green is really coming out in this piece. So it's not bad for just some acrylic paint, some tea, and a bit of water. For the decals that are on this, we're going to be using Liquitex Matte Gel. It's a gel medium used in painting. And I absolutely love this stuff. I've been using it for a couple of years now and became absolutely obsessed with using it in my work on canvases. But it also works for wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of paper here. And how you use this is you take a nice generous dollop there on your paintbrush and you paint over your letters. This works best if you have your printout from a laser printer and you want to make sure that any words or images that you want to be facing the right way is put in mirror image. So just put it into your photo editor and make it flip so that it is mirrored. Because once this goes on, if you do not flip it, you're going to have backwards images. So we just want to make sure it's nice and smooth on there. And I'm said to be the absolute worst at this. Got to get it on there straight. I'm known for having crooked bumper stickers on the car and everything else I do being crooked. So we'll see how this turns out when it's done. I think I got it on there fairly straight. Okay, so the other one's going to be a bit different. It's a poem and it's done as a page. So same thing again, just put the Liquitex over top of it and decide where it's going to go. And you just want to put your Liquitex over the exact image. It's always good to get some help from the cats. It's been 24 hours since we put our decal on, so now it's time to take this off. I've already done the other side, just to make this a little more time expedient. What you need is a bucket of warm water and a sponge that has a scrubber on one end and just sponge on the other. So you want to soak your sponge, wring it out just a little bit so that the water is not dripping off of it, and then just tap it on to your decal. I apologize for the extremely loud sounds of the hail outside the window. We're getting a bit of a storm at the moment. All right. So where this paint has just been stained on, you just want to make sure that you don't get a lot of the water around the decal. You just want to get this wet. So we're just going to let this set for probably about five minutes and then come back and show you how to remove that. It's been about six minutes now and you can see the print coming straight through the paper there, which means it's ready to come off. I got a crazy cat pestering me here at the moment, but she's a good girl. So you just take your finger and roll this paper off. It's a little time consuming, but it's it is quite worth it. Come on up, Snowflake. Come on, get up on my shoulder. Come on, get up there. She wants to be on my shoulder, but she also wants to headbutt me. If anybody's wondering why my cat's name is Snowflake, Snowflake is short for Snowflake Obsidian. She's a black cat that has white speckles all over her. And she is absolutely crazy. Aren't you, Snowflake? So it's just a matter of taking the residue off. Once you get it, this part, you've got all of the paper off, but there's a little bit of a residue of paper. So you just want to wet this down again. And take your fingers and go circular motion hard over it. And that'll lift more of it off. I have in the past used the scrubber part of the sponge but sometimes it's a bit too abrasive. 
just want to keep wetting your fingers and going around and you can actually feel the spots that have the paper residue and the spots that don't from time to time just wipe over that just to make sure see I can still feel some grit there now where this has been glued on and it's a glue transfer pretty much Sometimes when it's really super wet, you'll see a little bit of puckering of the glue. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to put some paint splatters and things like that over it and I'm going to sand it. I'm going to distress this board again. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. So now we're going to take this board and put it back up by the gerbil cage and apply the rest of the paint. One thing that I'm going to do first is I'm going to touch up the wood where the wood is dry now and there's some spots that obviously need a bit of touching up. I have a little tiny bit of the mixture from yesterday left. And I'm going to apply that in some of the little spots down along there. You can't even really see it. Pretty much just to make it wet. And I'm going to put a little bit over top of my decals. And I'm putting it through the decals just to make it look like it's a little bit more on the wood. Just to kind of mask some of the edges there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the paint splatters and just randomly flick the paint on it. I'm trying not to get too much on the decals. You're really not really getting a lot of paint on it. It's hard to do this without a toothbrush. Usually I use an old toothbrush for this. I like that splatter. But I don't have an old toothbrush at the moment. Which really sucks because I almost always do. But the old toothbrushes that I do have, they're not for painting. They're for taxidermy use, and I don't want to mix my mediums. I'll stand back a little further and see how that works. That makes a much finer mist. I have to be really careful though, because I'm not supposed to be doing much with my arm. So I did put a tiny bit of turquoise in my other one. Yes, you know, I know, kitty cat. little bit here and there. Just enough to give it a little tiny bit of color. Get some more in here, but I don't think it's really going to do much. There's a little bit in there, so it's alright. There, I got a streak. I think that's good. You don't want to overdo it because you want this to look like an old antique torque surface. So, to match the other side, I'm going to put a, a jar stain on that. So, I'm going to use a candle. It's just a small little jar candle there. And I'm just going to put some paint around the rim of it. I'm going to put that right there. That looks good. Now I think I want a smaller one too on that. So, choose the rim of this. So that's that. So now we're just going to let this paint dry and then we're going to take it and sand it down. The paint is dried on my board 
and now I'm getting ready to take this down to the workshop and scuff it up with the sander. Just want to show you that now that it's dry, your background here, the glue, it's not standing out as much, especially where I've went in with some paint and just kind of darkened that up. Once it's scuffed, it's going to pretty much sink right into the board. You're not going to get as much as this contrast here. And again, this will darken when I put the spray lacquer on. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing these glue transfers with the gel matte medium is that sometimes you can get some pieces that kind of fall out when you peel the paper off. So the reason why this happened is in this particular case the glue had dried before I got this transfer stuck face down because the glue was thinner in this area so you want to make sure that you get a really nice thick coating. Now I don't mind that this has little pieces missing because that just adds to the old distressed look that I'm going for, especially where I'm going to be scuffing a little bit over this anyway. It just looks like a really old relic that is just there on the work surface or something that had gotten accidentally glued down or adhered to the work table. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. I think it looks pretty cool. What you doing? I'm building my boats. You're building your boats? Yes. Yeah, can you show me a couple of prototypes? Sure. Or is it top secret? No. It's not top secret? There's one right here. That's cute. Finished. That's cute. Yeah. Many different patterns. Mm-hmm. That's all I can show you right now. That's all you can show me right now? Mm -hmm busy in the workshop. I'm going to steal your sander for a couple minutes. Is that okay? okay? Yeah. yeah. I did a light sanding over the surface and scuffed it up. You really can't tell much of it on the video. Well, you can see a little bit here where it's been sanded and a little bit around here. And on that part there you can see where it's a little bit more distressed. But it'll probably shine through a lot better once I get that spray lacquer on. For your spray coat, your clear lacquer, you can use anything that you like. You can use a traditional varnish, you can use triple thick, you can use Mod Podge, you can probably even go over it with the Liquitex gel matte medium. Um, I like to use trim clad clear, I like to use the metal paint, simply because I like the slower drying spray can. I don't like anything that dries too quick because I, sometimes I find that it just, it just doesn't take on a texture that I like. Um, the slow dry, I find that it kind of sinks into the wood a little bit more and it really brings out the grain in my projects and that's what I like. But it is your own personal preference. You also have to consider where you are going to be working on your project because this stuff here, the trim clad spray bomb, you have to use in a well ventilated area. You have to work in a well ventilated area when you're using traditional varnishes as well. Now if you're in a place where you do not have good ventilation or it's really cold like it is here, using triple thick or Mod Podge over your project, it'd probably be a better idea for you because you're not going to get those fumes. I'm going to take my project down into the workshop when my fiance is all finished and take over once the dust is settled. So we'll be back in a little bit here and we'll show you what this wood grain looks like once it's been spray coated. You can see my finished display pieces with my work over top at one of my craft sales. Um, it's probably not exactly like what an actual old weathered board would look like, but I think I did a really good job. And you can as well. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials.